Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Despite many rumors that Intel's celestial range of graphics cards is cancelled, this does not seem to be the case. And in this video, we're going to be discussing many rumors surrounding celestial, including memory and, well, the bring up of the GPU. Not just that, but Intel's Battle Mage, specifically G31, which is going to power the higher end Battle Mage variant, also seems to be back on the menu. You. And we're going to get into all of that plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. This video is sponsored by WhoKeys. Get reliable, fast, and cheap delivery of legitimate Windows 11, Windows 10, and Microsoft Office keys. We've been there before. That video game that you've been looking forward to for months on end. Or maybe you're just browsing the internet and suddenly, bang, Windows activation reminder pops up, totally breaking your immersion despite the fact that you've been trying to block out the best you can up until this point. Haunts you like a villain out of a survival horror game. <laughs> Don't worry, Sir Cloppy, who totally isn't a ripoff of other IPs. We've already got a legit copy of Windows, thanks to WhoKeys, the sponsor of this video. <sighs> anyway, as I was saying, you don't need to break the bank to pick up your copy of Windows 11. You can get all of the features, such as being able to customize your desktop, and of course, not be bothered by that activation reminder. And you can pick this up courtesy of WhoKeys. Buying your key on WhoKeys is super simple and is a fast and easy as well as safe process. I personally have purchased several keys on my own personal account using WhoKeys, as well as several of my friends have bought not just Windows, but Microsoft Office and other even software such as games as well, and have had absolutely no problems at all. For example, you can pick up Windows 11 Pro for just 30 US dollars 96, instead of the full price of 208. And if you do prefer to stay on Windows 10, it may be a good idea for you instead to pick up the LTSC version, which has extended support for your confidence, because this means you'll be able to get many of the critical security and vulnerability patches. And this is available for just $11.10 with our code RGT. You simply buy your key and within just a few seconds you are given it on screen and of course you can also access it via email. There is no stress, no fuss, just safe and quick and convenient. So what are you waiting for? You can click the link in the video description below and of course it's also the pinned comment and you can use our coupon code RGT, that is RGT, to net yourself 25% off site-wide. And again, you can pick up Windows 11, Microsoft Office, games, and lots of other stuff besides. It's safe, fast, and convenient. So once again, thanks to Hookies for sponsoring the video. So then, let's start with G31, shall we? Since, well, it's perhaps the GPU that has been <laughs> the most odd. Um, now, obviously, we have B570 as well as B580, which have already launched. And I won't go into the entire specs. You can see them on screen. But basically, we're looking for the higher end variant of 20 XE units, of course, with a 192-bit bus. However, for quite some time, we have known that Intel were planning a higher end variant, which was going to be comprised of 32 XE uh, units as well as a 256-bit bus, again GDDR6. We'll talk more about the performance in just a moment, but where is it? Well, again, there have been a lot of rumors that Battle Mage uh, high-end variants would be cancelled, but there is a very interesting update to this. Hayes 2K1 on Twitter has discovered a shipping manifest which seems to indicate that Intel of Vietnam have actually been sent a bunch of components actually which would comprise the graphics card. It's a connector, PCB stiffener, and other bits and bobs. And this appears to be for Battle Mage G31. Now, if you recall, there have been a lot of rumors regarding Battle Mage and the cancellation or not cancellation of G31. Not too long ago, if memory serves, around a month, month and a half ago, we saw Jakin on Twitter state that he believes that uh, this GPU is dead, but then maybe a couple of weeks after that, 
Raichu, who is also another prolific leaker, said that they believe that we will actually see the launch of G31 potentially in the future. As for my sources, the same sources who gave me many of the specifications told me initially that they think maybe the GPU will not launch, but more recently they do think it will actually see the light of day. What about performance? Well, we're going to have to do some speculation. So the earliest reports and rumors, including from my own sources, was that it's going to be roughly between a uh, again, you have to recall that this is prior to the launch of the RTX 50, so I'll be using RTX 40, and then we'll kind of translate that to the modern day. Um, it's going to be roughly between an RTX 4070, more potentially like a 4070 Ti, or maybe a little bit faster, depending on whether you're discussing gaming, or whether that's going to be compute, and so on and so forth. Now, we can also say that this is potentially correct because, again, the number of XC cores and other stuff, while it's not a one-to-one -one scaling, if you were to look at reviews of, for example, the B580, look at the performance data of various games and then kind of scale up, you can make a rough assumption that, yes, an RTX 4070 or a 4070 Ti would make logical sense. So in today's age, that would be probably like an RTX 5060 Ti, I'm guessing 16 gigabyte model, which yes, it's not gonna compete against the likes of an RTX 5090, but as I've said hundreds of times at this point, it doesn't have to. What it does need to do is be a decent GPU at the right price, and that's ultimately going to benefit Intel in the future for like improving their install base and so on and so on. So what about Celestial? Well, there are a few interesting reports actually for Intel Celestial. Now, just as a quick refresher for those who don't know, Intel actually made an unusual step of when they were first announcing all of the discrete GPUs, they basically confirmed the code names of the graphics cards. They said, of course, the first generation was Alchemist, which, well, is already out and is now replaced by Battle Mage. Then you have Celestial, and the final GPU that they've announced will be, of course, Druid. But yeah, there have been many reports that Celestial may not eventually launch, at least for discrete GPUs. The iGPUs seem to be pretty much a certainty. However, there are a couple of very interesting updates. First of which, uh, again, we have Haze 2K1. And they have uh, basically, you can see that the, the, the Celestial Discrete, then that part is important, Discrete. GPU P code IP model development developed pre silicon hardware modeling for power management IP and in Intel XE3, which of course is Celestial, uh, for Discrete GPU Celestial Team, CC, uh, and also mapped 13% of the boot reboot signal pathways for functional. I'm not going to read out the rest, you guys can see it on screen. So that's it then, right? It's the next stage is tape out. Well, interestingly, they then wrote on Twitter uh, as Tech Power Up actually covered this, and then they kind of replied to that that well, no, this actual you know posting is several months old at this point, but they were somewhat late sharing the update. So. It's very possible, of course, things have moved on rather significantly at this point with Celestial. Further to this, there seems to be some confirmation that Celestial will be utilizing GDDR7 for its memory type. I don't think anyone is particularly surprised. RTX 15, for example, the 5080, the 5070, and so on, are all using GDDR7, while RDNA 4 is still uh, stuck on GDDR6, the next generation, UDNA or RDNA 5, whatever you want to say, that will be GDDR7. So it makes a lot of sense that GDDR7 will be, of course, leveraged by Intel for the next generation. Further to this, uh, Jim Johnson, who is the SVP of Intel's client computing group, actually was asked by PC Gamer, are you more hopeful for the third generation of ARC than you were since Battle Mage's launch. And Johnson said, I wouldn't use the word hopeful, I would say confident. We now have the discrete card and software that is required to make it perform. Our confidence with, was high enough when we launched it integrated with Lunar Lake before we launched it as a discrete product. So it's an implementation of choice, whether we go discrete first or integrated first. Not just this, but Tom Peterson, uh, this dates back to late last year, was actually on the PC World Full Nerd podcast. He said that 
uh, Intel XE3 GPUs are fully developed. And obviously now they're pro focusing on the bring up process. Meanwhile, Druid is now what is being worked on in terms of development. So it does seem that Intel, at least for now, is again, fully committed to discrete graphics. And I think that's a really good thing. I've asked around, I haven't heard anything solid regarding the specifications and performance targets. I've heard even some mixed things, whether it's going to be a chiplet or not. I believe it's much more likely it's going to be a monolithic design, but do not quote me on that. I'm not 100% certain. I just think that Intel, and by monolithic and chiplet, by the way, I'm referring to like multiple compute, uh, multiple compute dies. I wouldn't be surprised if there is some level of, you know, kind of tiles that they're leveraging one way or another, but I don't think it's going to be multiple compute dies or anything like that. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see what Intel does in terms of the specifications. I, I'm i not expecting them, perhaps, to go to the point where they're going to be competing. I mean, what the hell is in, uh, NVIDIA's next GPUs, like the 6090? I don't necessarily know if it's going to be competing against the 6090, but I do think they're going to offer a much higher-end GPU. What's going to be really interesting, though, for um, the next generation is that well, presumably at that point, we should also have a pretty good understanding of what NVIDIA will be doing with its ARM processors. So it's kind of like everyone is jumping into each other's uh, you know, lunchbox and taking stuff. You have AMD, of course, that are producing CPUs and GPUs. Let's just ignore the rest of the product stack for now, guys. Uh, you have Intel that are now, of course, creating graphics cards as well, not just iGPUs. And then NVIDIA, well, yeah, they are also doing lots of stuff. Of course, they've already have a product for the server utilizing ARM CPUs. And naturally, they've also had things like Tegra. But uh, it seems that they also want to get into things like laptops. With that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.